Coming up next on Stags Country, this freshman cross country runner is also a world class musician. How an exchange of words during a soccer game lands a Fairfield player on the biggest stage of his career. We'll have his story. Words can describe this. This is unreal. The Stags go to Italy. We go with them, from sightseeing tours to games against Italian pro teams. Everything just went so smooth. All this and more coming up next on Stags Country. Hello, I'm Noah Finns, and this is Stags Country, Fairfield University. This show features the Division I athletics here on this beautiful campus. The Stags have already captured a championship from the fall sports, and we'll get to that. But first, the sport that's creating so much excitement, men's basketball. The Stags return most of the team that won a MAC regular season championship last year and add a couple transfers. Two guys who are no strangers to big time college basketball. They have already established themselves as major contributors for the Stags. The first of the transfers is Rakim Sanders. He was heavily recruited by major basketball powers around the country out of high school. He ended up at Boston College to stay close to his family in Rhode Island. He started for BC, earned ACC accolades, but when the school went through a coaching change, he too looked for a change. If, if you're gonna get seen, you're gonna get seen anywhere, so it doesn't matter what school you're at, and I felt like this was a good fit for me. The other transfer, Desmond Wade, also a hot commodity out of high school. He in New Jersey. He ended up as a starting point guard at the University of Houston, where he led the Cougars to a Conference USA championship. Like Sanders, he left when his coach left. Yeah, I just felt like it was a better situation me get closer to home, and plus my head coach, Coach Pendis, had left, and I was real comfortable with him. So I felt like I think I should make that move and come back closer to home and finish my career closer in the East Coast. By NCAA transfer rules, the two had to sit out last year. Well, I think that was the worst year of my life sitting out, but I adjusted to it, and I just went to practice, played hard every day, helped my teammates out, and just tried to cheer, cheer them on during the games. But it was a rough situation not playing, because I never not played a season of basketball, so it was real tough. We just talked to ourselves and told ourselves, you know, every practice, every, every workout, all that, we're just going to try to be the best in, that, in the gym. Even though we can't play, try to be the best. And now here they are, ready to play. Something of a gift for new head coach Sidney Johnson. Boy, was I excited when I started watching film of the guys who played last year and then getting in workouts and seeing Rakim and, and Dez in the spring. You know, I really realized we have something special here. In Sanders, you have a six foot five athletic player who can play several different positions. What doesn't he bring? I just don't often see that merge of physical talent and ability plus an awareness of how to actually play. In Wade, you get a lightning quick point guard, which allows other players like all conference guard Derek Needham to score more. With the addition of these two players, all the pieces seem to be in place. If we lose, I feel like it's a failure to me. I feel like this is the team to do it. Of course, we was here the whole summer working out. I'll be yeah. sick. All the hard work <laughs> we put in is kind of, yeah. it'll be rough losing. Fairfield is a preseason favorite to win the MAC. And some basketball pundits have tapped the Stags as a team that could make a long run in the NCAA tournament. It, it makes me nervous. We better win some games. They won plenty of games in their recent trip to Italy, an opportunity for the team to travel together, see new things, and get in some competition. As close as we was, as soon as we took that trip, I think it got us that much closer. So even before the Stags have a chance to win big games and perhaps championships, the move to Fairfield already turned out as the right one for Desmond Wade. When I'm, when I'm up here in Fairfield, I feel like I'm home. And Rakim Sanders. And I'm happy. That's all that matters to me. I'm happy. We're in the Campus Center, a very popular spot for the athletes, for all the students here at Fairfield University. Coming up a little later in the show, we're going to follow the Stags through their summer's tour through Italy. But first, the women's team also picked to finish near the top of the MAC. And if anyone's going to get them there, it's Taryn Johnson. The senior captain led the team in scoring, rebounding, and block shots last year. And as Kendra Farn shows us, she looked good doing it. Her stats tell the glaring side of Taryn Johnson, a player on top in just about every category, who after three years has become a star with a fire that as a leader is contagious. She's kind of a take no prisoners type of a player. So when you meet her off the court, she's very sweet, she's very nice, but underneath that exterior, there's, there's competitor. The team has a common goal to win the MAC championship, something this senior forward does not want to leave Fairfield without. The only pressure is, pressure I put on myself because I haven't 
won a championship in the high school nor collegiate level. So that's just something, a personal goal that I do want to leave with a championship. But there's another lesser known side of Johnson, unlike the one you see dripping with sweat up and down the court. It's a 21 year old from Brockton, Mass, who's all about looks. Yes, it's fun. I like change. I'm very spontaneous. I like to do different things, especially with myself and my look. Um, I'm very into fashion and clothes and hair and looking good. She definitely has a sense of fashion. Whenever we order our gear at the beginning of the year, she's the first one in the office. She wants to put her seal of approval on it, what travel sneakers we have, how well they'll coordinate with our travel suits. So yeah, she's got it going on. And she loves the challenge of a makeover, helping someone else take their look up a notch. Not make them look better, just bring the best them out of themselves. Okay, Taryn, welcome to my closet and welcome to a challenge. We're going to a basketball game, but we're also meeting friends after for dinner. So I want to be comfortable in the bleachers, but look cute in the restaurant. You can take it off during the game. We don't want to do too much on the earrings or accessorize too much because you won't be able to see them. She has so much to choose from. All right, Taryn. Love it. Love you it. You like it? Yes. Is okay. it comfortable? Are you comfortable? I'm in comfortable. It? This one we're going to go with a basic black legging, uh, black camisole, add a little bit of color with the cardigan sweater. Nice. I like it. Spin. Like it? Love it. Accessorize. Right. What do you think, guys? So if you see Kendra styling at the games, now you'll know why. Well, we're here on the soccer field where the men's team recently captured the MAC regular season championship. And it's on this field that Johnny Raj protects these goals. He's one of the best defenders around. So good that a major league soccer coach invited him to play for him this summer on the Chicago Fires Player Developmental League. It was an opportunity the junior from New Zealand couldn't pass up. Ladies and gentlemen, number 50, Jonathan Raj of the Chicago Fire PDL. Learned a lot from the big boys. Great professional environment, and just you learned a, a bunch of little things that you know you wouldn't you wouldn't learn elsewhere. Playing Niagara in a conference game, and the coach of the Chicago, Chicago Fire PDL team was an alumni, and so he was there watching our game. Me and him were having words, and I had no idea he was a coach of Chicago Fire. When we scored, the crowd supporters started yelling offside here, and, and I just went over to them, and you know. So he started cursing me out, actually, which, not, which was very nice. And I, told him, I, just, I just told him, I just pointed at the scoreboard and told him, you know, look at it, 1-0, we're beating your side, take that. After the game, he approached me and he said, you know, well, I'm the Chicago Fire coach, you know, we'll put that aside, you know, we'll put our differences aside, but I'd like you to come down and play for us in the summer. You know, there's little on me from Fairfield and all these big school names, you know. And they're good players. These players are meant to go pro. You got a chance to play with the PDL, but you also got a chance to play with MLS players. Yes, I did. If you had a good week in training, two or three players would get handpicked by the coach to go and train with the men's team. I was fortunate enough to have a few good weeks in training and uh, a few great games. Were you a little intimidated? Oh, yeah. Was it like completely eye-opening? I was just to step on that field in that stadium. Then the fact that you know all these players came out that you see on TV every day, you know, playing with the likes of Beckham, you know, all that Donovan. And uh, I saw them, I just, I, I couldn't believe it. I was in shock. I stood there for like a good 30 seconds staring at them. And one of the guys came up to me, you're right, you're right, son. I was like, oh, jeez, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. Your whole family's back in New Zealand, you know, far away, you don't get to see them all year. To be away from home for a year was another thing. I, it was a big choice going down there, but it was totally worth it to go and get your name out there with an MLS franchise, which is my goal coming here. And I want to go pro after, you know, after university. And so going to Chicago was an awesome experience. Your name is now amongst the people who are looking at potential professionals. Exactly, yeah, that was uh, that was the goal going there. You know, once you get your name out there, you are set. Do you feel you're a better soccer player now? Definitely, a lot better. Mentally, switched on. Once I sat down, I tried to stay as still as possible, not to rock the boat too much, because those things really are tiny. When Stag's Country returns, the basketball team gets an experience of a lifetime, and we're there through their tour of Italy. When Danielle Renzi isn't running for the cross-country team, she's wowing a worldwide audience with her accordion. Stag's Country will be right back.
This is unbelievable. This is like a, these are one, you gotta see for yourself. Words can describe this. This is unreal. From this cozy campus to the Colosseum in Rome, gondolas in Venice, Michelangelo's works in Florence, and competition against four professional basketball teams. It was all part of the Stag's recent trip to Italy. Teams are allowed to travel abroad once every four years, and it's amazing how close they get to one another as they share a once-in-a-lifetime experience. August 15, first time going to Italy, gonna be exciting, man. If you'd have told me this about 10 years ago, you'd be able to go to the Vatican. I wouldn't believe it. The size is remarkable. Like, the, the sculptures are, are unbelievable. Like, you have to experience it for yourself in order to really know what it's like. Look at this, Mom. I might get this. It's all here. I have got the rosy beads from my mom. Getting them at St. Peter's, I feel like this, these beads are me blessed. Like, for me, getting my mom is something special to me, and, and that's why I got them. And these are the letters that they sent to each other because... Visiting the uh, rooms of St. Ignatius was the most interesting thing I probably went to so far. Uh, you know, a lot of us get to go to colleges like Fairfield University or high schools like we go to, and it's just how lucky we were to have a guy who was so selfless and to have this idea of being, being for others. We hit the Trevi Fountain, the Pantheon, the Spanish Steps, Piazza Navona. You have to have an academic and cultural experience. You just you can't go to a place like that and come away with just the athletic experience. It was just great. And we showed up at this little box in the middle of nowhere, nothing around, and I thought we were lost. But he said, "This is the gym." Like the chemistry was there. And you couldn't tell that this was the first time we had two transfers, three freshmen, like everything just went so smooth. From my vantage point, I think we're there to play. We're there to take the experience in, and we definitely did plenty of that. We're looking at the leaning tower of Pisa. Yeah. 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 We get the background history and the reason why it's leaning, because yesterday when we played the game, Rakim tip dunked it so hard. So hard that it shook the everything ground. shook. And, and, like it just, and we thought it was an earthquake. We showed just, today. They're not letting nobody near. We're going to the top, baby! To the top, to the top! The stairs are also leaning to the side, so walking up, you had a little slant going, which made it a lot more difficult. I didn't anticipate that. Get everyone. Let's just get everyone here in this picture. I am so Come on. scared. Why are you going to go to the top? Because I was scared, all right? I was scared. There's nothing wrong with that. You learn a lot about a team when you're overseas, and it's just you there. Uh, you learn a lot about your coaches. You're working together in transition. Sometimes it's at the rim, sometimes it's pushing. I really like overall how competitive we were and how enthusiastic we were. We were a long way from home, and we played like we were in our backyard. It was exciting. I always heard it was a city on water, so I didn't know what to expect. When I got there, I, I didn't really believe the city was actually on the water until we had to get on the boat. And just looking around, you can tell it was a beautiful city. I didn't realize how shaky it was. Getting in and getting out was pretty tough. Once I sat down, I tried to stay as still as possible, not to rock the boat too much, because those things really are tiny. I didn't actually go on it, because I was scared. Me on a boat with Rakim and Ryan, I'd be too scared it's going to sink. We went to Verona on the way to one of our games. It was a nice little city. Um, the, the big claim there is they have Juliet's balcony from Romeo and Juliet back in high school. 
I actually did a play of Romeo and Juliet, and I actually played Romeo. Then got back on the bus for a nice little ride to our game. Oh my goodness. I uh, had an interesting turn. But me and Ryan said, the, the gym is definitely not that way. Ended up in this big field, like actually in a cornfield. Me and Ryan knew right away he was in trouble. And it took the bus about 10, 15 minutes to turn around because the road was so narrow. I remember just thinking on the bus, like, where are we going? Like, this, there's no way to the gym down this street. That stuff happens during the season. You know, you may, we got to play a lot of games down in New York City. You may be on the bus longer than you really want to, trying to get through traffic. Play hard, play hard, one, two, three. Play hard. I bet 13 out of our 13 players thought they were in a rap video. Get my name right there, say Derek Needham Villa. The sights and sounds and beauty of Lake Como, it was unbelievable to see from the water. Last game, mentally strong. Coach told us if you want to win this game, it's going to be mental more than physical. So that game for me was like a real business game. And that was the best feeling of the whole trip, was going 4-0. Even though we saw a lot of great sights, um, I wanted to connect with the team. It's just been a lot of fun. I can see the smiles on their faces when we talk about our times over there, whether it's how much gelato we ate or how long the, the walking tours were. I mean, these guys have some memories that are going to last a lifetime. Just to have a chance to go to Italy, yeah, I think we only had two guys that have ever traveled out, out of the country. So from that standpoint, I thought it was a tremendous experience for all of our guys. Um, it was a great experience, man. When I came back to school, I was like, Dad, I wish I was back in Italy again with my team. We had a lot of fun. Now, I've had the opportunity to, to actually go there, sightsee, experience the culture, the people, and, and like really embrace a culture I knew nothing about. Still to come on Stag's Country, playing for the cure. How Fairfield turns a field hockey game into a much bigger cause. And a cross country runner surprises her teammates with her other talent. A talent that makes her one of the world's best. Next on Stag's Country. Okay, no holes here. You shouldn't, don't, give him, don't give him an opening here. Coach Ed Page is working to get his Fairfield tennis team another MAC championship. But this summer, he was working on getting a different tennis team a national championship. He coached the New England Regional Junior Team at the national championships in Louisiana. A tremendous honor. When I got the call to do it, my, you know, I took about five seconds to consider it and said, of course, please count me in. The best teenagers in the country competing for their region. Page's New England team finished with a 3-2 and two record, leaving him wanting to do it again. It's very nice because it was a very prestigious competition, all of the best players in the country. And for Fairfield to have an association with not only New England, but the rest of the country has, has paid dividends already. One of the most soft-spoken athletes on campus is cross-country runner Danielle Renzi. Fact is, she's one of the best musicians in the world, but she's so quiet and humble even her teammates were shocked to find out just how well she plays the accordion. Kendra Farn has the story. They knew the magic of her feet, but on a fall day at Fairfield U, members of the cross country team had their eyes and ears open to the magic of their teammates' hands.
Danielle Renzi and her accordion had them mesmerized. Uh, she was fantastic. I was blown away. If someone asked you, what do you like better, cross-country running or playing the accordion, what would you say? That's a really tough question. I don't think I could really choose because they're just such different things for me. Like, they're both, they're both something I enjoy doing and they're both passions. The freshman from Rhode Island is intense, accomplished at both. Having started in the first grade, she's now one of the top electronic accordion players in the world. Her coach believes her music is part of the reason she's already far exceeding his running expectations, putting her close to the top. The intensity the concentration. We call it tunnel vision and when you play an instrument, right, you have to really be focused on what you're doing, what you're playing. Okay, when you're a competitive runner, you're thinking about your next step, your next move and she probably takes that into the music too. Over the summer, Renzi won the Roland National Competition. coming up I'll just I'll practice sometimes up to like three hours a day or in the, in the days before I just practice <laughs> sometimes the whole day in Rome in October at just 18 years old she was the sole representative for the United States in the international Roland competition she placed 11th in the world you were encouraged to even just skip college yes. and just go professionally into the accordion why not I don't know, I feel like I have to be diverse and not like be well-rounded and not just stick to one interest because I do have a lot of different things going on. With an honors course load, she's an overachiever who's humble beyond words. So many people in so many ways are affected by breast cancer. It's why the field hockey team here helps kick off the month-long Play for the Cure campaign. It's a countywide event designed to raise money and awareness. No need to adjust the color on your set. The Fairfield field hockey team, normally in red, wearing pink as part of the Play for the Cure campaign. The Stags kicked off the month-long countywide event by hosting several youth league games and then headlining the day with a game of their own. So it's, it's amazing how many women are touched by this disease. So when I did poll the team and ask, you know, who, who here as a relative or a friend who's been affected by breast cancer, and it's literally one in three. It's why the players are proud to be involved. They not only help raise awareness for breast cancer, but money as well. They hope to equal last year's total of over $12,000 through merchandise sales and donations. It's great for our team because it brings us together, and it's like an event that we, um, it means a lot to some of us because like for me, like both my grandmothers are survivors of breast cancer. And everyone becomes more aware of the situation and how it comes about. Fairfield University, it's a Jesuit school. Um, we are men and women for others. It's one of the main tenets of our university. So as a coach, ever since I've been here, it's been very important to me that we do community service. Coming up next on Stags Country, it's our student spotlight. A student spotlights a soccer player who accomplishes her goal by denying others theirs. We'll be right back. I'm in the Fairfield University Media Center, a state-of-the-art facility where students learn to shoot movies and produce television, games, and even this show. Students like senior Ivy Spate get a chance to produce what we call our student spotlight and present it right here on Stags Country. Throughout the 20 years of the Fairfield Women's Soccer Program, there have been many talented goalkeepers, including two Hall of Famers. Well, when people talk about those goalies of the past, maybe they should save a spot for Kelly Boudreau. What more can you say about senior captain Kelly Boudreaux? She's probably one of the, the, the greatest athletes I've had the opportunity to coach. She is currently in the top three in every goalkeeping statistic at Fairfield, including number one in shutouts and goals against average. And she is defending her name in the record books. 
so I'm back here just coming up with a big save every once in a while, which is exciting. So I like the, the pressure, I guess. It's not just her talent that has led to her success. Her extreme work ethic has made her an athletic force. She is the fittest person on, on the team. Seeing her be like as good as she is on the field, off the field, in fitness, it's, it only like encourages us to work harder. As far as all the athletes that I've worked with in the 10 years that I've been here, I put her in the top 1% of all the athletes that we've had. She understands the importance of training. I'm trying to get them on my, my track with me, coming in every day to do cardio. When I'm physically fit, I feel mentally more confident, and that, that helps me with my game. you got to get better each day. I mean, I know I, know I have the talent, but I, just, I feel like I have room to improve. It is this powerful self-motivation that first led O'Brien to think of Boudreaux as a future goalkeeper for the Stags. I happened to be her, uh, her coach at the, at the club level, and I had her for about two weeks, and I immediately uh, offered her a scholarship. He's kind of like a father role to me because I've known him for so long. And O'Brien not only got a talented goalkeeper, he got a great teammate and a vocal leader. There needs to be that one voice on the field, and I feel like that's my voice, and if that helps, that, so be it. Coming here, playing my first game, even being in the college atmosphere, it was very nerve-wracking, and I didn't think I could do it, and Kelly definitely pushed me. We all want to be just like Kelly. Combining her intense work in the weight room and her admirable leadership ability, Kelly Boudreaux might just have saved a spot as one of the best Fairfield goalkeepers of all time. Well, that's a wrap for this edition of Stags Country. A big thank you to all the students who work on this program. For those students, Ivy Spate, Kendra Farn, and the Fairfield University Media Center staff, I'm Noah Finns. Thanks for joining us.